This episode of the Sloopcast is brought to you by the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company is an Ohio-based company located in Cary, Ohio, where they usually say our seasoning will take your barbecue from good to great. The Mad Canadian Barbecue Company is now the official barbecue of the Cary High School Blue Devils. Uh, be sure to check out the Mad Canadian and his food truck uh, this week here. Uh, their website is currently down, but check out his social media sites on where him and his food truck are going to next. Uh, this week, they will be in Carrot, Ohio, the corner of North and Patterson on Wednesday, 4 to 7 p.m. This Thursday, up in Upper Sandusky and down in the downtown section, Thursday at 4 to 7 p.m. And this Friday, back in Finley, Ohio, over at Millstream Credit Union on Fostoria Avenue, Friday, 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Be sure to check out the social medias. If you missed any of that, to find out where he and his food truck are heading to next. Make any barbecue company where they have, you, they have your butt covered. This episode of these Loop Guys also brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Who the hell is that? Says no one who's ever heard this this uh, podcast before. Uh, they are a world class, world class hand roasted micro batch coffee company. All of your beans are fresh roasted to order. Um, there's there's no sitting around on shelves. There's no sitting around uh, in the back of a warehouse. No. You buy it, it's roasted, it's shipped. Uh, They're based out of Perrysburg, Ohio, which is just outside of Toledo. All of their beans are fair trade certified and USDA organic. Integrity is at the core of what they do. So you can find a bunch of amazing coffees, and I'll talk about some of the coffees during our next ad read. Uh, but you can find all those coffees for yourself over at ironbeancoffee.com. That's Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. What's going, everybody, in YouTube? Uh, this is a section for those who aren't familiar, the section where we're playing music in our podcast form. But... We have yeah. a little just a little it's, talk one on one here in the YouTube part. Yeah, it's uh, it's Ohio by the Black Keys. If you just want to play it in your head. <laughs> Hope everyone had a good weekend. We had our week zero college football this weekend. But we're going to get right into. Football. Yeah, yeah, football. <laughs> yeah, when we get into the actual football this Thursday, well, technically Wednesday, but who cares? It's Thursday. Thursday is when football starts. Yeah. All right, Kyle, let's get to it. We have a lot to do today. We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing pretty well. How are you doing, Jared? Kyle, there was football. Was it good football? No, but it was football. It was football nonetheless. I mean, sometimes you just you you take football. Um I, let's just let's just do it right away. Uh, Nebraska lost to terrible, terrible Illinois. Therefore, we must now assume that Nebraska is terrible, terrible, terrible Nebraska. Scott Frost is done, right? You know, I don't want to be that that person. Like in, back in 2013, when they when they said, "Oh, Ohio State lost to Virginia Tech. They're out of the they're out of conversation of the um, the playoff system." But you know what? It's sure looking that way. I, I don't want to say he's out the door, but boy, that door sure, sure has opened up for him right now to to leave Nebraska. Yeah, um, they haven't kicked him out of the door, but the door's open and he's bent over in front of it. Yes, <laughs> yes, exactly. But man, that that is just a terrible, terrible showing. I what was it? Nebraska was like a thirteen point favorite, something something like that, something. and man. Man, I would never would have thought Illinois, Illinois scoring 30 points. Like that doesn't happen often in Illinois over the past few years here. But yeah, maybe it's maybe it's um the new coaching changes and all that's happening up in Champaign. Well, the, the question always is, especially in a week zero or week one situation is, is X better than we thought or is Y worse than we thought? And right now I'm leaning towards Nebraska being worse than we thought that that's where I'm leaning right now. But hey, maybe I maybe I'm wrong. 
Um, yeah. Just, it, just it, some it, housekeeping up at the up, uh, at the top of the show here. Uh, we will be releasing a Ohio State Minnesota preview on um, where we're shooting. We're shooting for Wednesday morning. That's that's our goal. Um, Kyle's got some travel stuff, so there's a possibility it doesn't come out until Thursday morning in case the third in case the travel stuff goes bad or whatever. But it is, we are absolutely trying and hope to and expect to have the preview episode out Wednesday morning. Um, our schedule moving forward, not not this week, because the Thursday game makes things weird. Starting next week, we are moving to a smaller episode format. Um, essentially, we'll be doing four episodes a week. Uh, they will be shorter episodes. Uh, trying to sort of make things a little bit more bite sized. So that's that's where we're moving. So we're, we're going to do that four episodes next week and throughout the season. The um, when's there will be a Wednesday episode, but that will be behind the Patreon wall. So that will just be for our, our supporters over at uh, patreon.thesloopcast.com. Yeah, one last thing before we move on here, Jared, about that Nebraska and Illinois game. I think Scott Frost needs to just abandon the passing game altogether and just run the ball. He, he was supposed he was supposed to be like a run heavy type of offense, but Martinez, I like Martinez. I think he's I think he's a really good um good guy, but He's better. He's better on his feet than he is throwing that ball. Yeah. Well, yeah, I don't want to. I have additional thoughts, but let's move forward. All right, cool. Uh, All right, um, another... just, some, just, some tidbit, just some tidbit notes here. Uh, there in Munford, there in Munford, uh, we talked about who's going to get the block go this year. And we thought, oh, maybe it's somebody on the um, defensive side. Like we thought, like maybe Garrett. Yeah. We thought Garrett might have been a perfect candidate. But there in Munford is another great candidate. Unfortunately, he's on the offensive line, so he can't wear the zero number, but he's going to wear a patch on his jersey to um, represent him receiving the Blocko um, status for this year. Uh, yeah, when when because it sort of came up during Ask Sloopcast questions and whatnot during the course of the offseason. Hey, who who's going to get the Blocko this year? Kyle and I said, I think on multiple episodes that it would be between Thayer Munford and Haskell Garrett, but then we'd always say Haskell Garrett because Thayer Munford, because he's an offensive lineman legally can't wear zero. Thayer Munford, I think is every bit as deserving of that honor as, as as, uh, Haskell Garrett is maybe even more so. I mean, he's the player they chose. Uh, And so Kyle and I got that wrong, but for the right reasons. And <laughs> and, I, and I think in the future, I could see if they are stuck between two people, especially if they're offense and defensive side, you could see two blockos potentially. It, yeah, it, it's uh, I was all, when I, I actually don't I'm not certain that we don't get a second. I think it's a, I'm not saying it will happen. I'm saying I wouldn't be shocked if they came out and said, guess what? There's another one. And, and then it's Haskell Garrett. Um, it's, it's a possibility. I wouldn't say it's a likelihood by any means, but it's a possibility. Um, maybe, maybe not this year with it being just days as we're recording, as this is being, um, released, we are three days from kickoff. So I'm going to say probably no, no to Garrett this year. Well, Kyle, it's not, it's just the announcement though. Like it's, it's yeah. not like, you know what I mean? Anyway, um, mm-hmm. One more housekeeping item. If you want to be a part of the Slew Picks, if you want to join our online Slew Picks, you need to do so by Thursday for obvious reasons. If you need information on how to join the Slew Picks, join our Discord server. It is free. You can also find that information on our Patreon page, which is not free, but you can join our Discord server. And just ask me or ask anyone. It's in the announcements page, but it might be a little bit buried at this point. So if you need anything, just jump on there. Do 
at the Jared. And then there I'll be and I'll answer your questions and give you your information. Um, Kyle and I are moving further and further away from Twitter for reasons that are obvious to anyone who spends time on Twitter. Uh, and we're moving more and more into our Discord server. So if you want to come hang out with us, the Discord server is the best way to do that. Um, again, it's it's free. There are, There's a premium section in there for the patrons, but the vast majority of it is free and you'll have a perfectly good time in the free section. Yep. All right. Um, other news here. Uh, fortunate news with J.K. Dobbins. If anybody is watching preseason, J.K. Dobbins is going to be out for his second year in the NFL due to a torn ACL. Yeah, um, he's a running back and it happens and it sucks. Um, luckily, he's fairly young, so he'll he'll recover better than, say, if he did it at 27, 28, um, which, you know, by NFL running back standards is is old, unfortunately. That's just the reality of playing running back in the NFL. But second year player, he'll recover. He did it in the preseason, which one sucks because it's a meaningless football game. But it's also good because he'll have plenty of time to recover for next year. So, you know, it's a lot better than, you know, blowing your ACL in October, November. So um, yeah. he'll be back next year. You know, once upon a time ago, blowing your ACL meant you were going to be lousy the next year as well and if you go even further back like back to the days of gail sayers it means your career was over luckily medical science and blah 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 yeah um not going to go too deep into this because there really isn't much to talk about but big 10 acc and pac 12 have formed an in quotes alliance together whatever that means who knows we're all speculating at this point but I'm going to guess, and I think Jared agrees too. It's probably going to be more so for future game schedulings. But I mean, <laughs> we saw like a day after there was already a USC and um, SEC match, LSU matchup. Yeah, it's it's meaningless. Uh, it, I'll spend no more time on it because it honestly means nothing. I think it's more than anything else a political alliance that when it comes to like voting for a playoff expansion or voting for this or voting for that, that they're going to vote as a block. And therefore, because it's the power five, which could shrink to the power four, depending on what happens with the Big 12 over the next couple of years. It just means that those three conferences are going to decide what's happening in college football, which is po politically nice. Um, but ultimately, from a football standpoint, I think it's pretty meaningless. So let's spend yep. no more time on it. All right. Uh, let's see. What else do we have here? I think uh, it's time to get into the preview. I think it is. All right. So a few episodes, we talked about the our Big Ten preview or the Big North Conference, however you want to word it. Uh, today's episode, we're going to go over the other four Power Five conferences. So we'll go ahead and let me pull up our handy dandy uh, that's a notebook, but uh, <laughs> our handy dandy uh, <laughs> uh, PDF we have here. And let's start, Jared, with the ACC. Yeah. The ACC. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and call it a two team conference. Uh, it's North Carolina. It's Clemson. Um, Miami has a, a, a good quarterback, um, so they they should be, you know, in king. And so, you know, they'll make some waves. They could pull an upset here or there. Um, outside of that, I think it's kind of a two team conference. No, 100%. I don't see anybody on the Atlantic side, which is the side that Clemson's on. I don't really see anybody really stepping up to compete against Clemson. No. North Carolina State will be average. Boston College will be a little bit better than they were last year. Florida State, Louisville, Wake Forest, Syracuse. I don't think they're going to be all that good this year then. Um, Gangland, D.C., North Carolina beating Clemson this year. I think they'll get a run for their money. Uh, w when do they play them? Uh, trying to find the schedule here. Do you have the schedule for, for um, Clemson and North Carolina here? Uh, here we go. 
Uh, so. Ah, looks like they don't play each other in the regular season. It's just going to be just in the potentially in the um, conference championship game. I like North Carolina's uh, offense. I think um, I, I think how they've they've built their offense recently here, and you got to, you got the quarterback back. Um, Mac Brown's just doing a heck of a job recruiting there. Um, yeah, I I really like the offense defense. They're okay, but they got to be better than okay to beat Clemson's uh, offense. So I, I think, I think overall, I think North Car- North Carolina will give Clemson a run for their money. I just at this point, I just don't see it right now. I think their defense is better than you're giving them credit for. Um, it's honestly to me the the worst part about trying to beat Clemson if you're North Carolina is that your opportunity to do it comes at the end of the season. Clemson's had has had a lot of turnover. Uh, it's a, it's a and, and you know when we talk about Alabama and Ohio State and other programs, we say you know they don't rebuild, they reload. Well, can Clemson do that? Can Clemson reload the same way that Ohio State and Alabama can reload? And they have in the past. Will they continue to do that? Do they have their next quarterback in line? Is well, he looked pretty, good. He looked pretty good that guy for them. Yeah, he looked pretty good against that uh, Notre Dame game last year. So I, I think between Clemson being sort of down and North Carolina being sort of up, I think it's possible. I do. Um, the problem with making that prediction is just that Clemson is so unknown. Because like I said, it's it's a new quarterback and it's a new running back and it's a uh, a fair amount of change along the offensive line, but their defense should be as great as ever. And they just have talent. You know what I mean? Is it, it's a lot like looking Sorry, at Ohio. I don't have an answer for you. Did anyone else hear Alexa just right there? I, I, I have no idea what happened. Anyway, <laughs> uh, she doesn't know what's happening. Oh, you, you got to stop. Alexa, Alexa, you got to stop. <laughs> she doesn't know who. She doesn't know if Clemson's going to be any good either. Point is, is that their defense is going to be great. Um, Their offense is going to have to deal with some turnover. And I think that the way they recruit, they should be fine. And therefore, I'm I'm still going with Clemson as the ACC champion. But if Sam Howe is what we expect Sam Howe to be, then that that would be a, a better conversation. Yeah, nope, absolutely. But I, I don't see Miami as a legitimate contender the way I think people want me to think that Miami is a legitimate contender. Yeah, agreed. And I don't feel like we need, need to spend time on each of the other uh, teams in the ACC. No, hell I don't, no. I don't... Um, Virginia Tech might be pretty decent this year. Um, Boston College, I think, has some good momentum. Florida State still sucks. Um, I don't feel like going any deeper than that. I think that's as far. I think that's as deep as we need to go in the ACC. Agreed. All right. Um, so moving on to the next conference here. I'm scrolling down here. Um, nope, not the Big Ten. We already did the Big Ten a few episodes ago. You want to do a um, super quick Big Ten? Sure. Ohio State. All right. We're good. All right. Good, good. job. All right. Moving <laughs> on. Uh, <laughs> real, Wisconsin, Ohio State in the Big Ten title game. Is that how you're feeling it? Yes. Yep. Yes, yes. Okay. All right. If not Wisconsin, if not Wisconsin, who? Iowa? Probably. Minnesota. I still like Minnesota. I think Minnesota's in the conversation, um, but I do think it's Wisconsin, and I think it's. I actually like Minnesota is the number two team in the Big Ten West. Uh, anyone, uh, Tom and I talked about this on the Saturday morning morning scoop. Um, anyway, if you're expecting the Ohio State Minnesota game to be fifty three to nothing, you're wrong. Yep, now, agreed. I don't think Minnesota's defense can hang with Ohio State's offense. 
but I do think Minnesota is going to score some points against Ohio State. Ultimately, I think Ohio State is fine because their offense uh, should run all over and pass all over Minnesota's defense. Yep. More more on that on on this preview episode coming up. All right. uh, Big 12 conference here. Uh, Oklahoma. Oklahoma and who else? Oklahoma and who else? That's a great question. Who else? Is it is it Texas? Is Texas back, Kyle? It's just Big 12. The Big 12. Is Texas no. back? Nope. Texas is not back. They were not any closer than they were under Tom Herman. Okay. So we don't have like a East, West, Atlantic, whatever in the Big 12. So we just get to pick two teams. Uh, who do you who do you like in the Big 12 championship game? I don't know. It, Probably it's we're doing tough. a national Maybe. preview. We're working through the conferences. Yeah, I guess. I guess if I were to pick, probably Iowa State. I, I really don't like really any other teams here because maybe TCU might have, um, could be decent here. Um, definitely, I don't think Texas is is worth it. Um, Oklahoma State, no. Baylor, West Virginia, Kansas State, Texas Tech, Kansas. I don't see any of those teams, you know, so I would say between Iowa state and and TCU. I'm all, I'm all, I'm all on Iowa state this year. I think that they they have a lot. Like I was last year. (laughs) I think they, (laughs) Kyle loves his weather teams. Um, Yes. Iowa state has a lot of great returning talent this year. Uh, It's sort of like with UNC. What, what do you get out of the quarterback? Is Brock Purdy as good as we expect him to be? And if so, I just don't even see TCU competing for that second. I don't see anyone's competing for that second spot. Two best quarterbacks in the conference are Spencer Radler and Brock Purdy. So the question then becomes. If there's not a clear number three. Right. If it's if it's absolutely number one, number two in the Big 12, which I think it is. Is that fair? Do you agree, Kyle? Yeah, that's fair. So that's our Big 12 championship game. The question then becomes, does Iowa State stand a chance? Because everyone it's it's Oklahoma and everyone else in the Big 12. It's been like that for years now. I know. I I think Iowa State, the more I look at it. Yeah, the more I do like Iowa State more, just what you mentioned before, returning productivity on offense and defense, too. I'm Uh, sleeping on DC (laughs) girls. They're, yeah, they're returning a lot on that defense, too. And and the way that they play their defense, too, it's it's set to stop the pass-heavy type of offenses like Oklahoma, too. So, yeah, don't sleep on Iowa State. I think they'll definitely give a run um for oklahoma's money uh this season so i uh gangland says uh he thinks that oklahoma's defense will be a lot better uh has a lot better defense than they have in the past but i don't think they have enough so i think they have enough absolutely to dominate the big 12 i think their defense is good enough to do that uh, and i and i don't think you disagree with that statement i think you absolutely agree with that statement now if you're saying is their defense improved enough to actually make an impact in the playoffs that's we'll we'll, we're, we'll get there we're getting there we'll, we'll get there a little bit later in the show so the question right now big 12 uh, i think they can lock down 75 percent of the conference isu and the rest i don't know um, you know, TCU is talented enough on offense to make it interesting. Uh, I, I don't know if it goes any deeper than that. Uh, Texas Tech's defense is terrible. Maybe they have enough on offense to make it look interesting or fun. Um, but I think what used to be like this huge, wide open pass all over the place conference uh, looks a little offensively weak this year, in my opinion. Um, mm-hmm. again, I, I think that the two quarterbacks are the two quarterbacks period. Um, yep. 
and I don't think Spencer, I was, uh, it, we, uh, we did a bit of a Patreon meetup this past weekend and I was talking to Nomad about this, uh, and, uh, also Austin and Brawls as well, um, that while I think Spencer Radler's good, I'm not saying he's bad. I think that he's not as good as he thinks he is. And I don't think he's on the same level as the Oklahoma quarterbacks that we've seen in recent years. I don't think he's as good as Jalen Hurts. I don't think he's as good as Baker Mayfield. I don't think he's as good as. Um, help me. The guy in between playing in Arizona. Someone help me. Spacing on his name. Murray, thank you. So, I don't know, that's... Uh, Nomad, with the not hot take, hot take. I don't know, I, I feel like nationally people are like, oh, Spencer Radler, um, and, and I get that when he's played, he's not looked great. So he's not super hyped, but I think people are still expecting like an Oklahoma quarterback type season out of him. And I just don't I don't see it. I don't see it at all. Uh, the good news is, is that he has a ton of talent around him uh, and in front of him. Uh, Oklahoma's offense is still going to be amazing. And Radler is absolutely good enough to lead that offense to a Big 12 title. But can they go further than that, I think, is the question. That's yeah. that's that will be the big question for all time with Oklahoma until they actually win a playoff game. Biggest question for the Big 12. Will Kansas win one game this year? Oh, with like in conference play? No, just one game, period. Uh, do you have their schedule? I do. Oh, OK, let's do it. Um. So I'm going to assume they lose every game in the Big 12. Uh, I mean, probably. Yeah. Um, so they're not they're out of conference. There are games. some other really I, bad Big 12 teams. I think Texas Tech's terrible. I, I think there's a couple other really bad teams. Yeah. Um, they play at Duke. They play at Coastal Carolina and they play one of the toughest, if not the toughest FCS teams, South Dakota. OK, they're definitely losing to South Dakota. They're definitely losing to Coastal Carolina. That's a that's a pretty good. Are they and I, and I, are they Sunbelt? I think so. Coastal Carolina, are they Sunbelt? Yeah, I think they are. Yeah. And I think they'll lose to Duke as well. Yeah, I think. Will, so. will they win one game this year? <laughs> I mean, I feel like they will because they'll win a game, I think, in the Big 12, just because someone's going to sleepwalk into the game. And like it's just going to be the other team screwing it up. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe it's against West Virginia. Maybe it's against Texas. So they have Texas Tech coming off of a bye. So they get a week to game plan against a terrible Texas Tech team. Maybe they pull an upset. And don't get me wrong, it would be an upset. And don't get me wrong, Kansas is terrible. But I think that they win a conference game this year. And if I had to pick one, I'd say Texas Tech. But it, it's I, I think I think that they win. a I think they win a Big 12 game. I think that they pull an upset, win a Big 12 game. All right. All right. Before we go to the last two conferences, let's go and hear from our sponsors, Jared. Um, let's go and start off with our good friends up in Perrysburg, Ohio, the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Oh, threw me a curveball there. I was expecting you to go with your read. <laughs> Uh, so Iron Bean Coffee, we talked about Iron Bean Coffee um, in the first ad read about how they're organic and Ohio based and roast to order and all that stuff. We already did all that. Let's talk about some of the individual coffees. Uh, there is the Ride or Die, which is a gentle and distinctive version of the American uh, classic bref breakfast cup. Um, it's a Brazilian yellow bourbon bean, uh, has su superb smoothness and flavor. There's uh, another medium roast would be the cast iron uh the cast iron uh medium roast uh 100 single origin arabica beans um 
Another medium roast would be the Rage Against the Dying of the Light. Uh, it has notes of cherry and milk chocolate. Um, it has a, a medium body with a long finish. Um, it has really th this one smells great. It has great aroma. Uh, the Rocco, which is available in both medium and dark, um, which is a Ethiopian natural. And then there's the Loki, which is a medium light. Uh, it's a wet process blend. Uh, higher in caffeine than you might expect from a light blend. Uh, it's still low in acidity, still very rich tasting, um, has uh, citrus and floral notes. Uh, and it's it's one of my absolute favorite like light blends I've ever had, period, anywhere of all time. So you can check out all those coffees and more over at ironbeancoffee.com. That's Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. This episode is also brought to you by a good friends over at the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Uh, the Mad Canadian wants me to tell you all that. I um, apologize for the website being down for so long here. Um, they're just working through a few kinks with uh, some of their vendors and what they want to do with their seasoning. So just hang tight until they are able to get the site up with our, our favorite seasonings moving forward. But in the meantime, check out where him and his food trucks are heading to next. If you still want some of those great seasonings, you've run out, or you want to try some of the try some of that good old Mad Canadian barbecue food straight from the straight from the um the bus that he that he's transformed. Um, check out his social medias on where him and his food truck are going to next. I mentioned before Wednesday he'll be in Cary, Ohio, the corner of North and Patterson. Thursday afternoon he'll be in Upper Sandusky in the downtown section. And Friday, he'll be back in Northwest Ohio, back in Finley at the Millstream Credit Union on Fostoria Avenue for lunchtime. So be sure to check those out and any other announcements over at the Mad Canadians, um, social medias at Twitter, Facebook, um, where you can find out where him and his food truck are heading to next. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, where they are now the official barbecue of the Cary High School Blue Devils. I almost went right into my ad read again, just because like my brain doesn't work some days. <laughs> no worries. All right, Jared, moving on to Pack 12 After Dark. It's easy for you to say it's not your brain. <laughs> I worry Pac about me sometimes. So the Pack 12 here is a very interesting. Probably the most interesting <laughs> in terms of Define who's going to come out on top. Kyle, Kyle, I demand that you define interesting. <laughs> interesting in terms of knowing who's going to win that conference because all the other conferences is like you can pick one or two my teams. thoughts exactly with getting land with, with the with the pack 12 there could be more than two teams that you can think of that could win that conference so your definition of interesting is a wash of mediocrity mediocrity yes. mediocrity um I don't know. I disagree. I I think that there's a clear favorite in the North and the South. All right. And who is that? Uh, the North, the North, I would give it to the Ducks. Yes. Now the South, I, I could see three, maybe four, but I mean, UCLA played Hawaii, which Hawaii is a bad team, right. but UCLA right. took care of business. So three, possibly four. I'll, I'll stick with three teams in the South that I could pick from. I think it's Utah. It's totally Utah to me. I know Arizona State has a lot of talent, uh, but they cheated. Like, they cheated to get that talent. There's a big storm cloud over that program right now. Are they a strong enough program to overcome oncoming sanctions? No, they aren't. They're Arizona State. Um, so I, I, don't, I don't know if they survive that. If they if they just survive having all of that and like Jaden Daniels is a great quarterback, I think he, he'll get a chance in the NFL. Um, but I just I just don't see it. I don't see it. Uh, Utah to me feels like a no, they're not a spectacular team, but they have a really good defense um, and enough talent on offense to win what is a really crappy division. That that's just how I feel about it. Um, I I I'd much rather have Utah than anyone else in the South. But 
I mean, as, as far as Brawls is going all in on UCLA. It, it's a, another thing I talked about on the morning scoop on Saturday um, was or did we or was that a conversation Tom and I had before we turned the mics on? I don't remember. But that UCLA is or rather Chip Kelly is if you look at him and Scott Frost and you put their resumes at their new homes side by side. Where, you know, where, where's the difference? If you're talking about Scott Frost having a really tough start at his new school, you have to also talk about Chip Kelly having a real rough start at his new school and add on top of that, the fact that the big 10 is a lot better. Nebraska is facing a lot tougher teams than is UCLA in the Pac-12. Now, one of the big differences is that uh, Scott Frost lost this past weekend and Chip Kelly didn't. But again, it's it's Hawaii. It is just Hawaii. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm just going to go through some of the um, the teams here. So Oregon, yeah, I think is I think is the clear favorite right now. Will they win it? I, I Brawley, I saw that should. after. I, I think they should, but um, man, I think Oregon's really set up to make a run this year. They are returning a lot of productivity, both offensive and defense here. Uh, their schedule is very favorable where they play Fresno state and they play um, an FCS school as well, but they do have to go on over to Columbus in that second week, which we're all very excited for. But if we're sticking uh, within the realms of like winning the Pac-12, though, that game doesn't count. Yeah. Yes. Now, Washington, Washington returns even more players than Oregon does in the on offense. And I really I really like Washington in terms of how they. And how they're going to play this year, I, I think they'll definitely give um, Oregon a run for their money here. But don't definitely don't sleep on Washington there. But for everybody else in that north, that north division there, Cal, um, Stanford, Oregon State, Washington State, yeah, I I wouldn't even count them towards trying to win the win the, winning the division there. Interesting conversation happening in the live chat right now. Um, Gangland and Brawley asking uh, essentially who's worse, <laughs> Illinois or Hawaii is essentially the conversation happening right now. Uh, um, I would say Hawaii. Right says, now, just you can't Illinois tell me did Illinois is favored massively over the Rainbow Warriors. <laughs> Gangland guessed minus two and a half, which isn't massive. <laughs> so. Oh, after this weekend, I think I think you might change that up to, to maybe four or five and a half. Oh, maybe. Um. <laughs> So, yeah, Ohio State plays Oregon. Oregon plays Ohio State, which plays into the national picture a lot more than it plays into the Pac-12 picture. Um, so Pac-12, North. Washington's not going to be bad. They're going to have a good defense. Um, if Oregon falls apart, Washington will be there to take over the, that conference. I think they are absolutely clearly undoubtedly the second best team in the Pac-12 North. Is that fair, Kyle? Is there like a clear tier one, a clear tier two, and then a wash of nonsense after that? Yeah, agreed. Okay. Agreed. So that, that, that does make it a little bit more interesting in the South where, you know, as you were saying, that second tier of team, Arizona State, USC, UCLA, is a lot better than the second tier in the North. Um. So, yeah, it's also a lot more likely that one of those teams comes forward and, and potentially challenges Utah, whereas, yeah, I think Oregon's clearly the best team, not just in their division, but Kyle also in the Pac-12 in general. Is that yeah. is that fair or, yeah. or can we predict Pac-12 champion Oregon? Yeah, I would I would say Pac at this point, Pac-12. Champion would be Oregon. Uh, they they just they just got to prove it on the field right now. I know I know that they've they've won the Pac-12 um, back-to-back years now, 
but this last I don't year know. Really it, it just it just something about Oregon and the postseason that just does not sit well with me. I agree. Um, our, I'm going Utah, but if we're predicting the Big 12 championship game, I'm going Oregon over Utah. Are you going with Utah? Or are you going with one of those other teams? Yeah, I, I think I would have to stick with um, with Utah. I I know a lot of people like Herm Edwards, but the cloud. I I would I would be on that board if it weren't for the cloud hanging over the program with all of yep. the nonsense going on. Yep, but don't don't sleep on USC as well. USC has. It's had some pretty decent recruiting um, uh, years here, so they're about they're about due for some of those um, really good um, recruits to really pop up right now. So don't don't sleep on USC this year. USC is kind of like typical LA USC right now. They got a really good quarterback in Slavis. Um, if he lives up to his potential, good running backs, good wide receivers, but. So all of their glamour positions are doing really well. Uh, I just don't know what happens after that. Subpar offensive line, average at best defense. Um, I, I I don't know what to do with USC when they go to face really good talent. They need to get back to what they have been good when they were successful. And that's pounding the rock. They were one of the worst teams last year running the ball they need to get back to their roots and being able to pound that rock and they have talent at running back i just don't know if they have any talent in their in their in their slob room correct yes correct are we ready to move on to the sec yep let's move on to the sa say sa say all right so uh you want to do the easier division here the east is east easier I want to say East is easier. Um, I think both conferences have clear top twos. Is that fair? Each division or just the conference as a whole? Excuse me. Each division within the conference have clear top twos. Um, I wouldn't say so, but I'll, I'll let you start. Okay. I think in the East, it's clearly Georgia, Florida, and everybody else. I don't like anyone else in the East whatsoever. Mm -hmm. In the West, it's Bama, it's Texas A&M. LSU has talent, but eh. So yeah, it's just, it's Alabama, it's Texas A&M, and then just everybody else. I, I don't see, I don't. I don't see anything worth note happening in the SEC outside of those four teams. I just don't see it. I think I think Texas A&M could potentially challenge Bama this year because Bama's turning over a lot of talent. I think Florida could overtake Georgia this year. But I don't feel nearly as good about saying that as I do about Texas A&M. I just... Florida lost a lot last year as well. Um, Georgia, I just, I, I have a general lack of faith in Georgia when it comes to big games and and sort of getting to that next level. So, I don't know. It's I, if I had to rank those four teams, I would probably put both of the SEC West teams ahead of both of the SEC East teams. Kyle, rank them. Four. Your right. favorite teams in the SEC, rank them. All right, so number one, be Alabama, two, Georgia, three, Texas A&M, and then four, LSU. That's a great question, Gangland, by the way. I'm sorry, Kyle. Could you say that again? I was reading the chat. Bama, Georgia, Texas A&M, and then LSU. Really? You, you like mm -hmm. LSU that much? I like them over Florida. Yeah, Florida, <clears throat> excuse me, Florida, just like you said, has just lost too much on that offensive side there. It's just... I mean, I have Georgia, I have Florida as my fifth best in the SEC, but like, like you said, that you had like two two favorites in each of the division. It's two for me on the West: Alabama, Texas a and and then it's Georgia one, Florida two, and then everybody else in the in the C section. Then I think there's a there's a clear separation from Georgia to Florida, 
and then to everybody else from there. Okay, Kyle. So I think what we're figuring out here is that there's a clear top three teams. Yes. <laughs> um, because you, you're not wrong with your criticism of Georgia. And when I tell you that you like LSU too much, I don't think I'm wrong either. So maybe it's actually a top three. Maybe now that we talk about it, it's actually a top three. Uh, Gangland asked a great question. Uh, yeah, but does Texas A&M have the quarterback to do it? Great question. I don't know. I, I that's it's a huge question mark for them right now. Um, I don't know. Do they? That's a great uh, when it comes to college football. One of the reasons why we're giving North Carolina a chance is because of their quarterback. One of the reasons mm -hmm. why we might be a little slow on Oklahoma from a national perspective or a little bit slow on a um, who else were we saying uh, Clemson? You know, is Uyunglele the guy? One of the reasons we're a little bit slow there is because of the quarterback. So it's all about quarterback and Texas A&M. It's, it's not bad. It's just a question mark. We don't know. Mm -hmm. and, and it's the same thing that if you go to other, other podcasts um, outside of Ohio State, they're going to say the same thing with Ohio State. Now you got question mark Ohio State. No, you no, have... No. No, 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 no. I, I do not accept that. C.J. Stroud. I've heard it. I've heard it. C.J. Stroud is a like a, a hair away from being a five star quarterback. I, I understand. Yes. And I'm Ohio not here State. to say I'm not here to say you're wrong or anything. I'm just saying that the same kind of criticism that we're giving to like Texas A&M, Texas A&M has some good quarterbacks. They're, they're not, they're on the same level as CJ Stroud. Not going to say that, but I, I think they're going to have good enough quarterbacks to be a, a potentially top five, six team when this is all said and done. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just, I, I can't get on that. It's, it's not the yeah. same. It's not the same because like, when Oklahoma replaces a quarterback, when Alabama, when Clemson replaces a quarterback, we basically start from the perspective of they're probably going to be good, but what if they aren't? And we don't give that same pass. We don't give that same um, flexibility to Texas A&M. They don't have that history. Uh, Kellen Mund is nothing special. He was never anything special. Um, I Texas A&M does not get that sort of pass to me. Okay. All right. Well, we'll disagree there, but, but everybody else, including what, um, no bad was asked. It's, um, can we get an R Kansas at Kansas for seller dweller rights? I, I think that belongs to just Kansas. Um, what, what, what about Arkansas? What are we talking about? Um, being the seller dweller rights. Uh, no, not even close that they're not even the worst team in the, in the sec West. That's Mississippi state. <laughs> um, yeah. And then there's Vanderbilt, which is just like, what, what is Vanderbilt even doing in the sec? Like, seriously, what is Vanderbilt doing in the SEC? It's what is they stick Tennessee out like a sore thumb. SEC? What's Tennessee doing in the SEC? Well, yeah, I, I get I get that it's money nomad, but. Like, it just culturally doesn't does not fit at all. Mm -hmm. They're such right, a big so, they're such a big 10 school. Let's just say it. Vanderbilt is such a big 10 school. <laughs> so. Alabama and Georgia, who do you, who do you got uh, coming out of here then? Uh, it's I, I, I hate to say it. I do. It's Alabama, Georgia. Um, I I really, really want to make the case for Texas A&M. And if they surprise me at quarterback, if if they get a lot more performance out of the quarterback position, than than we're expecting, then I think they can challenge Alabama. I do. I, I think mm -hmm. that. 
It's certainly possible. I just don't see it. So I have to go with the boring answer and, and say Bama and Georgia. Yeah. I mean, if one thing that Alabama has over Georgia, and that's going to be experience and um, return productivity for uh, Georgia, because Alabama has only a third of their pr productivity returning from last year. One of the worst um, coming into the 2021 season, but Alabama reloads. It so it doesn't matter. It's not going to matter though, but it is something to keep an eye out to see how well Alabama can reload all those players again this year. All right, Kyle. So who wins? SEC championship game, yeah. Atlanta, Georgia, Bama, it's, Georgia. It's Alabama until it's Alabama until you prove me wrong. I ex yeah. Al Alabama until it's not. As long yeah. as long as Saban's there. And even honestly, with the amount of talent that Saban continues to stockpile, even three or four years after Saban leaves, it's Bama till it's not. All right. Uh, what other team I want to cover here? Just they don't belong to a conference, but what about Notre Dame? Uh, I've slotted them into the ACC for now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. Um, I, I think that they can be a, a player in the playoff conversation, but I don't think that they make it. Yeah. They got to be real careful uh, heading into end of September, beginning of October here. Do not sleep on them. They're go they're playing in Chicago to take on Wisconsin. And then they're hosting the fighting fickles in the first weekend of October. So watch out for Notre Dame. Notre Dame can't sleep on those two teams there. That's that's really tough. Yeah, looking at looking at their schedule. Wow, Wisconsin, Cincinnati at Virginia Tech. Then they have a bye week. Then they play UNC or excuse me USC. Then UNC. That's a tough middle middle schedule there. Say whatever you want to say about Notre Dame. I mean, literally, there's lots of things you can say about Notre Dame. Never say that they don't schedule tough. And they open and they open the season at Florida State. You know, Florida State's not that good this year, but well, that's heading down to heading down to Tallahassee still. Oh, well, that's a part of their scheduling agreement. That's essentially like a, mm. a conference game. Yeah, it um, is. Yeah. All right, Kyle. So that's that's all five of the Power Five conferences. Uh, you brought up Notre Dame. Do you do you see anyone else outside of the Power Five in the playoff conversation? The only way in that, that would be Cincinnati and they would just, they would win all their tough games. They, they have some, who they play, um, just mentioned Notre Dame. And I think they play Indiana as well. If for some reason they win both of those games and they take care of business in conference, I don't know how you can't leave out Cincinnati then. I, I mean, I do. <laughs> but, <laughs> okay, so Cincinnati's in the conversation. Okay. Who are your four playoff teams and who are your fifth and six? Oh boy. Um, Rank them top six. All right. Right now, right now I would put Alabama one. It's Alabama until it's not. It's, it's it, it is, the reality it, it we is, live in. Yep. It is Alabama until it's not. Um, I'll just put I'll put Ohio State just because of how great of an offense Ohio State has right now. Uh, I mean, just kind of look at Alabama last year. That doesn't matter who you go up against; the offense just rolls. That's how I think of um, Ohio State this year. Number real, three, real quick before you say number three, did we ever say who we thought was going to win the ACC? Because I feel like it's yeah, very Clemson. pertinent conversation Clemson. right now. Clemson, yeah, Clemson. Okay, so is, is Clemson number three? Uh, yeah, I have Clemson number three. And then that number four is going to be really interesting. Like, could it be having, I know I'm going to get a lot of heat for this. Could it be another SEC school? Could it be Georgia at that number four spot? It's got to be Oklahoma, could it, right? It could maybe Oklahoma. If if Oklahoma loses one game and they're a conference championship champion, Oklahoma goes in there. And, and some people here, including um, the stats that we're looking at here, they really have UNC in there as well. Yeah, but if UNC, so if you, let, let's, let, 
fantasy world. You have, oh, we're already doing playoff scenarios. This is great. Um, UNC and Clemson undefeated all the way up until the ACC title game, right? Yep. This is bullshit. I'm going to say it right now. This is bullshit. If UNC wins and it, the game's close and competitive and all of that, then you could see both UNC and Clemson get into the playoff. But if Clemson wins, I don't think you get UNC as the, as a second ACC team. And that's not fair. And it's bullshit. And all of that, I acknowledge. Um, but especially, especially looking at Clemson's schedule right now. Nomad, Clemson's I do. schedule is horrific. Other than, well, I should say horrific. I, I take that back. They do play Georgia the first game. They do play Georgia. So I guess I should not say horrific. But all the other games that Clemson plays is horrific. Okay, but they, they play all of their conference games and they're participating in probably the best out-of-conference game in the entire country? Yeah. What, what, what else fair. do you want them to do? Fair. That's fair. Have the like ACC I, be better? Yeah, it's not their fault that the ACC is is terrible, yeah. and it's not their fault that they didn't get the cross divisional game with North Carolina, and they'll yeah. they'll play North Carolina, so you know probably. Yep. Thanks, Nomad. All right. Um, yeah, I th- I think that's it, Jared. Um, I don't think we got anything else other than some um oh, ask Slootcast questions. Here. Don't don't I get to do my four teams? Oh. Well, do it then already. <laughs> Bama one, because it's Bama till it's not. Ohio State number two. I am going to go Clemson number three. I really want to say UNC. I do. I really, really do. I do. But it's Clemson number three because, guys, that's just the math. I'm sorry. I I believe what's there's an insane stat where all of the playoff spots have gone to like one of four teams except for a small number. And those four teams are Alabama, Ohio state, Clemson and Oklahoma. And that's exactly what the playoff is going to be again this year. And I get that that's a boring answer. And I get that a lot of people don't want that, but I, that's how I see it shaking out. That's how I see it shaking out. It's 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 number one, Alabama, number two, Ohio State, number three, Clemson, uh, number four. It might be number two. It doesn't matter. I think I think mm-hmm. Ohio State and Clemson are going to be two and three. If they beat Georgia, that's a hell. I mean, of course, Ohio State will beat Oregon in this scenario. Um, so, yeah, they'll both have really nice out of conference wins. Um, and then that fourth spot goes to Oklahoma. So I think it's Ohio State and Clemson playing once again in the playoff, and it'll be Bama and Oklahoma playing once again in the playoff. Yep. Just had a conversation with a coworker asking asking me what I think the playoffs will be this year. And I said, remember what last year's was? Yeah, probably about the same. Probably about the same. And I everyone... Um, I mean, Kyle and I, one of the things we're using to reference this episode right now is the pick six preview guide, right? Uh, He has Oklahoma number one into the playoffs, Georgia number two, North Carolina number four, or excuse me, Georgia number two, Ohio State number three, North Carolina number four. And I really want that just from a let's shake it up and get some different teams in here standpoint. I, I just don't see it. Yep. Agreed. All right, let's get into some um, questions real quick here. We're coming up on the hour mark here. Uh, so let us start with Duncan. Duncan from the Discord. I know we can't even begin to predict what the committee would do if something were to happen, like if Ohio State has to forfeit to Maryland, Illinois, would that loss be considered or would the country collectively shrug it off? That's actually a really good question. Yeah, um, one of the things... I a lot. Counts as a loss, but then you wouldn't have that eyeball test right. of that game. Uh, I think that's a great question. I'd say one of the benefits here is that Ohio State, their football team, 
either is or will be 100% vaccinated. So that's a huge help. Um, if you don't know, Ohio State as the university made it made vaccinations mandatory for students. So Ohio State's going to be 100% vaccinated. That helps. Now, does 100% that no, it doesn't. It's not a 100% effective, especially because of variants and yada, yada, yada stuff we don't want to talk about anymore. I get it. Yep. Um, but yeah, it's, I, I hope not because like last year, those games were not Ohio State's fault. All, all the both games that Ohio State couldn't have played weren't Ohio State's fault. So, well, Ohio State canceled one of them. I think it was against. Was it? Yeah, I think it was Ohio. Michigan canceled Ohio State, Michigan. But I think Ohio State canceled. Was it Maryland? Anyone in the in the Illinois? Was it Illinois? Illinois. That's okay. right. You're right. It was Illinois. Yep. You're right. But man, the, yeah, this this year will be really other turtle based game. We have two yeah, turtle based I'm, games. <laughs> yeah, I'm. I don't know. I really don't know how to answer this question. I, I hope not. I hope not. But but at the end, if you if you're going to have to decide between two or three teams, it's a terrible have, gang land. If you have to, if you have like two or three teams that have the same record, and you're trying to figure out which of these teams these between these three teams that are um, going to make that final spot. You, you might give it to the team that played. And if it was a close loss. You might have to give it to them then. Yeah. And it's but in case anyone doesn't know this, this rule is universal across the I mean, not that it is universal, but all the conferences have adopted this, that if you have to cancel due to covid, you lose. That's not just a Big Ten thing. All yep. all of the major conferences, at least, have, have done it. Um, so it's a very interesting question. Um, I don't I don't know the answer to it. I, I feel like. The. The commissioners, not the commissioners, the committee are going to put who they feel the best for in in. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, Kabuto, with the new Big Ten Pac-12 ACC alliance, does that officially make the SEC an evil access power so we can have an access versus allies? And what does that make Greg Sinke? <laughs> I'm not answering that last part. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, this alliance means nothing to me. I, I get what he's the. Yeah, I get it. I get it. But the alliance means nothing to me. It's. They didn't even sign a contract, guys, they didn't even sign a contract. Yeah, it, it doesn't mean anything until something actually does happen. If. If, yeah. All right. Nomad asking an important question here over and under, Jared. On amount of games, Kyle beats Jared in the sloop picks. He has it at seven, so seven and a half. Under. I'm winning again. I'm making it two in a row, y'all. Oof. He, he, see, see, guys, he wins one out of the six sloop cats, sloop cast picks, sloop picks, and he's he's already he's already he's already getting it over his head here. Listen, have you won more of them? Yes. Have I mm -hmm. won the most recent one? Also, yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, Austin formation. Best beer to have when knocking back some cold ones with the boys. Um. So I we uh I got to knock back some cold ones with some of the uh Patreon supporters. Um, we went to a uh, Pins Mechanical uh downtown Columbus, and uh, I was I was drinking Wolfridge the entire time. I I drank their uh, Clear Sky coffee ale. The entire time um, I had a few of those and some tall glasses. Uh, so I, I guess that uh, has to rank pretty high on the board. I don't know. Um, maybe maybe since September is coming around here. Ooh. Maybe maybe knocks back some Oktoberfest. Some Oktoberfest. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm, I'm waiting. I see them on the shelves. I'm seeing them, but I'm, I'm waiting until September Kyle, to do that. Kyle. I buy them and and I'm, I'm i'm just letting you know because especially if it's a small brewery they're probably only going to make x number of cans so them showing up early means that they're going to be gone early 
So right. buy them. All right. So you're editing this while I go and get some beer then. Yeah, right? yeah, 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 yeah. Which okay. is right. how we always do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, Nomad, again here. Do we see Ohio State play a lot of base defense schemes in week one to let the secondary get settled in? Uh, that's a great question. Um, and, and I think you see a lot of base secondary anyway, simply because Minnesota is a it's a big team. It's it's going to be a run heavy team. So it's a it's a Big Ten matchup. <laughs> yeah, it's so th- it's it's a size based team. Uh, they're big, excellent offensive line. Um, you'll see a lot of like what's Ohio State's linebackers going to do. Like I said, it's a good offensive line, good running game. Um, their passing game isn't anything special. It shouldn't be. They have a good quarterback, but not a lot of talent as far as pass catchers go. Uh, so we'll we'll see. But their primary offensive threat will be running the ball. So I think you do see a lot of base, even if it's not for the reason you suggested. I, I still think it's what we see. Also, what even is base anymore? Is there a base <laughs> defense nowadays? I'm not even sure, to be honest. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Buckeye Zach, what are we looking up? Uh, similar question here. Uh, what are we looking for in the scheme for linebackers for week one? I think just like what Jared said, I think we're going to see a 4-3 defense. You're going to get three back, three uh, linebackers in there just because of the type of offense we're going to see in Minnesota, it's just going to be a run heavy type of offense. So I think we'll see three linebackers in. Or even if it's two linebackers, the bullet will be one of their bigger bullet guys, like a Craig Young. Yep. Agreed. Uh, another question from Nomad. Is Scott Frost done? Does Illinois coach Mama June after them back? Um, Have them back. I- I, I talked about this again on Saturday with Tom Moore um, on the morning scoop. The he because, you know, we were talking theoretically at that point, but it's like, can Scott, you know, if, if Scott Frost loses to Illinois, which he did, is he done at Nebraska? And my answer, that's what Tom asked me. And my answer at the time was. One, I don't feel like they fire him right away. I feel like he's going to continue the season. He'll finish the season. But I don't envision Nebraska having enough success to dig out of that hole. He is now in such a deep hole. That I I just don't see the rest of their season going well enough to get out of the well. That's it. So I do think he's done. Because I just don't envision Nebraska recovering in the way yep. that the flip, they would need to, on the to flip save side his with, job. On the flip side with Illinois, Buckeye Zach asks, is Burt the savior that will put Illinois into future mid-tier greatness? No. I'm not going to overreact after one game. I'm not going to do it. All right. Big win for Illinois, but we'll, we'll, see, we'll see, how they, see how they fare moving on to the season. Uh, Any other questions you want to answer here? I don't even have the show notes uh, up into that area, so I'm just going to have to trust you. All right. right. Um, I I think that's it. I think that's all we have for today's episode. We'll see everybody here hopefully Wednesday. Hopefully. Depends on (laughs) depends on what what time I can get back from my my adventure trip and um, hopefully get to see everybody back here on Wednesday. Tuesday, Tuesday, if you're a fellow um, Patreon. Uh, yeah. Uh, and speaking of the devil, there's Buckeye Zach down in the live chat. And um, yeah, I guess that's it. So if anyone um, just subscribe to all the stuff, I think just because we're going to be doing a new sort of release schedule, um, make sure to just subscribe to the podcast. So you have us just automatically downloaded to your phone, subscribe to our YouTube channel, uh, subscribe to the Buckeye Scoop YouTube channel. 
Uh, and you'll you'll get buttons at the if you're watching this on YouTube, you'll get buttons at the end of the show where you can click and, and do that. Um, and I think. Uh, uh, yeah, and if you want to listen to the Patreon only episode that will be on Wednesdays. Uh, subscribe to our Patreon. Um, the bonus episode will be available at the three dollar tier. But know that you can. Um, you can give us more if you want to give us more, but it's it's it will be as cheap as three dollars. A month, that is not not like per episode or or anything like that. And if you do, um, if you pay for all 12, if you pay for 12 months up front, you save, I want to say it's something like 12 percent. Um, so that's even less than three dollars a month if you uh, choose to do it that way. Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? Um, just one thing. Hell is real, Jer. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. Hell it is real. It used to be. Crew, crew makes a great comeback to beat their in-state rival, um, FC Cincinnati, uh, three to two. And that first goal, Jared, I don't know if you watched the game, but that first goal from Lucas. Homie, I was at the game. Well, then how did you like that goal? <laughs> that first goal from Lucas? Uh, it was it was like national tier placement it, it was i this has to be his last year in columbus right yeah like, like you put you put like if you put a bullseye in each corner of the goalposts there he would have just nailed that bullseye there couldn't ask it any better placement beautiful but yeah uh, hopefully this is the start of a turnaround for the crew here uh they were in a bit of a slump here so hopefully this is the game that gets them turned around. <laughs> a bit of a slump as a five game losing streak. Yes. Uh, put more salt into the wound there is the worst losing streak in crew history. There you go. All right. That, that's it here. Um, I know in Ohio versus Michigan battle, I know there's a little league world series going on, but that'll be finished by the time this gets posted. So also it's baseball. It also, it is baseball. It's probably the only time we mentioned baseball. So who, who, <laughs> who, who in our um, patrons is the baseball guru? Oh, we have a few. Uh, Gangland, Nomad, Austin, I know all really like baseball. Yeah, well, this was your, this was your one and maybe only spot for baseball here. So they right, talk it, about Jared. it on the discord sometimes and i just have to zone out i don't because I, I don't i don't know all right and that's it jared all right kyle uh you feel feeling feeling a little emo today because i feel like i feel like we got to go for it i feel like we got to go for it uh ohio's very own hawthorne heights the name of the song is ohio is for lovers guys put put some black on maybe put some black nail polish on we're going back to 2005 2006 uh we're we're going emo we're going emo to end this episode uh once again this is hawthorne heights ohio is for lovers ending today's show and with all of that being said i'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer listen to local music and of course support your local podcasters once again this is hawthorne heights What year did you say, Jared? I think I said like 2005, 2006. 2004. Really? I guess. Yeah. Yeah. 2004. Well, see, here's here's the thing. That song became popular um, when we were in college. So therefore, in my mind, I gra so we graduated high school in 2004. So therefore, mm -hmm. anything that happened after high school couldn't have happened in 2004. And I understand logically why that's wrong, because you graduate in the first half of the year and then like a whole other half of the year happens. But yeah. But anyway, like uh, like at the beginning of the show, this is where we play music, but we can't do that on YouTube. So if you want to hear the music, you have to listen on our uh, actual podcast feed. And this is bonus YouTube content. The uh, 
couple uh, of couple of former couple of former Buckeye wideouts doing really well today. Uh, Devin Smith, one day after signing a contract, um, makes a great catch, and uh, Johnny Dixon doing things with the Cowboys right now. Yeah, um, how about that? Honestly, this isn't. If you're actually getting a lot of snaps in the last preseason game, it's because they're not expecting to. They're showing off for other teams, probably is honest. They're they're trying to put some stuff on some film for some other teams, um, especially in regards to Devin Smith. I, I don't see him making the final 53. Uh, I have no idea what the wider. I, I have no idea what the situation is around Johnny Dixon that would. But. I. I just don't know, but hey, all the best. I hope I hope all the best for him. Yep. No sorry is needed. But, Although we are about you're good. You just, missed, you just missed some baseball talk. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> I knew what the response was going to be before he said it. Oh. Uh, but it, it was it was just Little League World Series. That's it was it. a simple acknowledgement that the Little League World Series is a thing that's currently happening. Yeah. All right, All right Jared. Yeah. Yep. Let's let's, let's end yes. today's episode. Yes. Once again, we'd like to thank Hawthorne Heights for ending today's show. And I would like to uh, once again thank the Iron Bean Coffee Company for sponsoring today's show. Uh, let's see. We did some medium roast. We did a light roast. Um, they also have flavored coffees. So you can go check out the website for some flavored coffees if that's how you want to do it. But I'm going to talk about some dark roast coffees. Um, there's the Fierce, uh, which is 100 percent Arabica beans. Um, there is the Rocco. The Rocco also av available in medium. You can get it in dark. It's but it's still a, a unique Ethiopian natural um, there's the Thor, which is like a medium dark. Uh, but if you want a dark, dark, then you could go with the Odin. Uh, and let's see, there's the drink from the skull of your enemy. This one, I, I really like this one. Uh, it's, it's, it's thick. Um, it's, it kind of has like notes of like cedar and tobacco. It's real interesting. Um, it, I, I wasn't sure if I was going to like it at first. Uh, but it's it's actually great. It's also got like some wine and spice notes in there. It's it's very good. Um, there's the fear no evil, which isn't even a dark roast. It's a black roast. It's it's void of all light. It's got the sheen of polished armor. Uh, there's the integrity, which is their flagship dark roast coffee. Um, if so, if like maybe you're an espresso drinker, then there you go. That's that's your go to. Um, they have that. And like I said, a bunch of flavored coffees that I didn't have time to go over today. Uh, so if you want to check those out, you can check those out by going to ironbeancoffee.com. Once again, that is Iron Bean Coffee, Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. This episode was also brought to you by our good friends over at the Med Canadian Barbecue Company. Their site might be down, but their barbecue truck is still on fire. <laughs> be sure to check out to where him way, and in his, a good way. In a, in a good way. Um, it's not the, tr the truck, truck isn't on fire. The the grill that they pulled behind the truck is on fire. Just so we're clear. Yes. The, the truck uh, is safe and everyone's fine. <laughs> uh, check out where him and his food truck are heading to next over at the Med Canadian social medias on Twitter or Facebook. it will be in Cary, Ohio, Friday um, dinner time, uh, Wednesday in Cary, uh, Thursday, they'll be in Upper Sandusky for dinner time. And Friday at lunchtime, they'll be in Finley, Ohio, up by the um, Millstream Credit Union on Fostoria Avenue. Yeah, check out the social media to find out where him and his food truck are heading to next. McKinney Barbecue Company, where they are now the official barbecue of the Cary High School Blue Devils. Mm -hmm.